were thinking about Jesus' encounter with the Samaritan woman at the well. And uh, the story is uh, told in John chapter 4, verses 5 to 42. And this time I'm not going to read this, uh, but you might like to read the whole um, passage just to have an understanding of what's going on here. Now, Jesus is traveling and he enters Sinkar, which is a city in Samaria. And he is in the land which Jacob gave to his uh, son Joseph, or near the land, and by Jacob's well. Uh, there are no kind of uh, buckets that you lower into the well. People come with their own buckets to lower to the well and get their water out. So the Samaritan woman comes to get water for herself and Jesus is waiting for his disciples to come and bring him food. He is hungry and he is thirsty. And he says to the Samaritan woman, give me some water. This is an absolutely scandalous thing to do for a Jewish man to speak to a woman and to speak to a Samaritan woman who has no respect amongst anyone at all is an absolutely scandalous thing to do. So the woman's first reaction is not, oh, you're hungry and thirsty, let me get you some water. But her reaction is, how can you even talk to me? Who am I that you want to speak to me? And there are many times when we feel exactly the same with the living God. We think, who am I that he should even help me? Who am I that he would even listen to the cry of my heart? Who am I that he might have a calling on my life? He might give me a gift. He might actually appoint me to serve him. And that's exactly the way Moses had reacted when he said, God, I'm a man of faltering lips. I stutter, I can't speak, and how are you sending me? And God sent him to save a whole nation. And sometimes in the world, amongst our friends and families, we feel, like, who am I? We're absolutely worthless. But the answer to that question, who am I, is embedded in Jesus' reply to this woman. Now, Jesus then answers the Samaritan woman and says if she had asked for it, he would have given her living water, which means this is the kind of water that never ends. It's like a waterfall. It's like a stream. The source is constantly there, flowing and flowing and flowing. The hunger, the thirst is constantly quenched. And all the questions about life and, um, and death and whether we are loved or who we are loved by are all answered through the living waters that Jesus offers us. But this is a really strange concept for the woman. She's like, you haven't even got a bucket. Are you going to give me water? It's such a strange concept. And we do find sometimes the way Jesus speaks to us or leads us into situations which might be really complicated, really difficult, um, challenging, painful experiences of life. We just don't understand. It's hard to know and imagine and trust that Jesus is there with us. But that living water is still working in us. Our understanding is very limited to what we see and how we have conceived things. But Jesus' understanding is so much more than that. And even though things may be challenging, he really does offer us the living water. And he offered her the living water, and that was the answer to her question of who am I? And he said, 
I will offer you living water. You are so precious for me. You are so important for me. Not only are you precious for me, but I know everything about you. And Jesus did know everything about her. Because when she said, I haven't got a husband, then he told her all that she was and what her background was, everything about her. But he didn't confront her with her sins. He didn't say to her, hey, you sinner, I know everything about you. You've been with loads of men and you're not even married. That is not what he said. He said, ask for it and I will give you living water. And I know who you are. But regardless of who you are, how you feel about yourself, what your background is, what you've been up to, here I am with all my heart, I love you. And as Jesus, throughout this time of Lent, is walking towards the cross, that's what we need to do, the reason why he went to the cross or so that he could offer us the living water. And there is no hiding place from him. He knows everything about us. But his love is not limited, restricted, or hindered by the fact that he knows everything about us. He wants to lavish this love to all of us. May you know the wonderful living water, the love of Jesus, the acceptance of our living Saviour. <laughs>